guys, welcome back. I have a very special guest with me today. I have Itzel. I hope I said that right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am very excited to get to chat with her and hear her story. So I will let you introduce yourself. So hi, everybody. My name is Itzel. And, um, you know, I'm currently working as a school counselor. Um, I do have Turner syndrome. I was diagnosed as a baby. I was born in Mexico. Um, I was not diagnosed right immediately. Um, it took a couple of months for them to diagnose me with Turner syndrome. Uh, but basically, right when I was born, there were issues, you know, with uh, liquid retention and just things didn't look normal. You know, so we went to Mexico City, we got some tests done, and I was diagnosed when I was about maybe three, two months old. Oh, wow. Yeah, so fairly young. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's so interesting that fluid retention was the first thing. Um, mm -hmm. That is such a common thing. I remember... Yeah. My mom talks about how puffy my hands and feet would be when I was little all the time. Mm -hmm. um, do you still, because I know I do, do you still mm -hmm. struggle with fluid retention as an adult? No, no. If I, like after I turned one, it kind of went away. So at first the journey started because obviously I was retaining liquid in my feet and they got concerned. They thought, oh, she's having issues with her kidneys. So at first it was all about her kidneys and, you know, we might need to do surgery. Obviously that was not the case. So um, they started running tests and that's when they found out that it was actually Turner's, but it went away uh, when I was like one, when I started walking basically, and I never retained it liquid um, ever since, but that's kind of how it started. And I was also a fairly small baby. I mean, I was a couple of pounds. I mean, I, was, I think I was like maybe six, four pounds so I was fairly tiny so that was another sign but at that time they didn't know you know they didn't know that was a, a sign they just knew her feet looked kind of funny because it was only my feet it wasn't anywhere else but that was kind of the sign and yeah I was diagnosed when I was fairly young so did the doctors that noticed and did the testing had they had they run into other cases of Turner's did they know no, very much actually, about it Actually, no, it's a really funny story because, you know, in Mexico, they have a lot of uh, markets, right? Markets are huge over there. So uh, my grandma actually had uh, like a little mini food um, place at the market where she would sell food. And my mom, you know, she was kind of stressing out about me being sick. And, you know, I was there with my mom and my grandma and the military, a military doctor came to grab food at the food stand that my mom had and he happened to take a look at me and he like oh take her to mexico city take her to a military hospital and when they looked at me that's when they kind of started saying this might be turner's and they kind of had an idea but it was at the military hospital oh, where wow. they actually kind of knew that there was something kind of off and then from there you know they sent me to to mexico city to continue to be monitored Wow, that's yeah, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you have any trouble with other doctors not knowing about Turner syndrome very much? As I got older, yes, um, you know. But as a baby, um, I mean, I, I really remember dealing with doctors when I was like maybe four or five years old and they already knew I had Turner syndrome because at that point we were going to Mexico City to get tests done, to get monitored, to all that stuff. So at that point they knew, but then once I came to the United States and just, you know, working with doctors and just, you know, going because you have the flu or whatever and you mention, oh, and I happen to have Turner syndrome. Yeah, they had no clue. Like, it's almost like you always have to say, Turner syndrome is, you know, and I actually have it. And the question is, like, how does that affect you? And then, you know, it starts a conversation. But no, when I was really young, um, you know, I was being monitored by that hospital in Mexico City who happens to specialize in kids with different, you know, conditions. So uh, they, they knew about Turner syndromes at that point. 
That's awesome. Yeah. I think all of us have at one point have that experience of yeah. using Turner syndrome and the doctor going, remind me what that is. And you exactly. try to hold your face in a polite face. And you're like, yeah. Okay. Exactly. It's, it's such mm -hmm. an interesting dynamic when you have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say is mm -hmm. the biggest way Turner syndrome has impacted your life? And before that, mm -hmm. when they tested you, are you, mm -hmm. are you mosaic or classic? I am classic. Um, and then I got, so I got tested in Mexico and then I got when I moved to the United States. I moved to the United States when I was nine years old. Um, so we got the testing done all over again at that point, and I am um, classic. Okay. And the question about um, the impact, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I think the biggest impact has been definitely um, just struggling with learning, you know, struggling with school. It has always been such a struggle just because I, I do have dyslexia. I struggle with dyslexia. So just learning and school was extremely difficult, you know, because you don't know, like, how to ask for help when you're so young and you don't understand how it's affecting you. So, you know, that journey. And then also the other biggest impact I had is that I don't feel like it affects me. So then when I do have issues, when I do have health issues, I have to remind myself to take it slow. And, and it's always kind of such a big struggle just to take it slow and to be mindful, you know, that you do have a medical condition and, and you do have to take it easy, that you do have to go to the doctor and be monitored because you're not like everybody else, you know, even though sometimes it feels like it and you want to push it and you want to, you know, do your best to keep up with everybody, but you really can. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. Um, yeah. I know I can fall into that too. I think for those that, you know, we don't have this long list of really intense health complications mm -hmm. we're struggling from it. It's so easy to think, oh, it's not going to be a huge deal if I don't get that screening for another six months or, yeah. or if I don't pay attention to taking my vitamins or my mm -hmm. medicine and oh man I feel it so mm -hmm. hard when I don't mm -hmm. and I have a younger sister that doesn't have Turner syndrome and even you know taking the vitamins they're like oh well, she doesn't have to really do that and I do you know because my bones are not in good shape so I have to be very mindful about my bones because I could fracture a bone at any time so you know just being mindful of that it's, it's such an impact because yeah your everyday life gets impacted basically yeah and I think to some extent especially having those around us that don't have it that don't I, that's a perfect example of you know your mm -hmm. sister doesn't have to think about it as much as you do yeah mm -hmm. um with our immune systems being what they are, I get sick so much easier than my brothers uh, yeah. do. And, you know, mm -hmm. little stuff like that. It's, you don't always think about that difference in that mm -hmm. whether you feel like it or not, you probably yeah. need to be a little more careful. Mm -hmm. So, did you have, um, did you have to take growth hormones at all? I did. Um, so right when I got to the United States, um, like I said, I was nine years old. They ran the test for like about a year. And about two years later, I was doing the growth hormones. I did them for about five years, five years or so. Um, and yeah, that, that, that was a huge thing. You know, that was very impactful. I, I felt like I was dealing with, you know, just feeling depressed all the time, feeling like everything was such a struggle because my body was changing so quickly like you know even weight gain and everything was impacting me so those were some really difficult five years for sure did you ever um because for five years <laughs> i'm trying to do the math so you would have been about mm -hmm. eight when you stopped 
No, uh, when I stopped, I was about 15 because I started at 11. So, yeah. oh, okay. I, I was okay. about 15, about to turn 16, maybe. Yeah. So, um, were you giving the shot to yourself? No, my mom was doing that for me. Yeah. Okay. I... I had heard, I've heard from several people that I, I'm learning how the growth hormone process works yeah. in hand, um, that they did the growth hormones and then they would start HRT at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Was that the same for you? That was the same for me. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly how that worked. Yeah. So, and that was a whole other process, figuring out what worked for you you know, what kind of um, therapy works for you when it comes to making sure that you're not having any side effects from the birth control or whatever they're giving you at that point. So yeah, that was another process. But I think just, just going through so many hormonal changes was super, super difficult. You know, and I think, um, you know, now that it's been obviously more than a couple of years since I finished the treatment and now that I'm on the other side, I definitely think that just having a counselor, having somebody support us with that mental health aspect, because I think of those years and, you know, they were so difficult just because of the, the hormones itself, you know, the growth hormones and your body changes so quickly, you know, like I felt like I was a completely different person by the time I was done with the brown hormones. So uh, it, it was quite a journey. And then after that, like I say, figuring out what works for you so you don't have any side effects and and then a couple of years ago, because I have always been taking birth control, that was the therapy that they decided to give me. And a couple of years ago, I go to my doctor and they're like, oh, that was not the right type of hormone um, replacement therapy that you needed, you know? So that was a whole other process that I'm still dealing with because um, I'm having a lot of side effects from changing to the new um hormone replacement therapy, treatment basically that they're giving me. So as a whole thing that now I'm dealing with because I haven't really found the one that works for me. So I'm having a lot of issues. Yeah, that can be, oh man, that can be such a process. I've mm -hmm. gone through probably a handful of different variations of what I'm on. Um, yeah. And you know, they're, they're both maybe a generic version of yeah. birth control, but oh man, the levels make yeah. such a difference. They um, do. You are so right about the mental health aspect of all of that too. Just mm -hmm. that process of going through mm -hmm. that whole time period. Um, when normally, even in somebody that doesn't have to do all of those extra things, it's a difficult time development yeah. developmentally. Um, mm -hmm. Would you say there was anything specific that you would have or you would recommend to somebody to help um, specifically that might have helped you? I think for me, something that um, I wish I would have done when I was going through the hormone treatment, you know, through the growth hormones, I think just the awareness that I needed help because I didn't know I needed help. I just know I felt like I was crying all of the time. I was depressed. I, I would get emotional for no reason at all. And it was kind of like I was not really aware of where that was coming from and just I never asked for help, you know, so I think um, for me, just helping other girls understand it's okay to need help. Like you said, it's hard even for a typical teenager. Now imagine going through girl hormones that are changing you, that, you know, it changes everything that you know about your body. And then stopping the growth hormones and realizing, oh, you mean I'm not going to grow anymore? That was a whole process in itself, you know. Because you think, oh, I'm, I'm growing, I'm doing wonderful. And then they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're done. You know, and just acknowledging, yeah, I am being affected and reaching out for help because I think that was my bad. That was something that I never actually said until now that I'm older. Now that I, you know, I actually went to therapy and I'm trying to understand myself as somebody that has Turner syndrome, you know, and, and I think it has been so beneficial. 
you know, just to understand that I do need help, that I'm not like everybody else, but that's okay. Uh, understand that's okay. It's okay that I need help, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, oh man, I wish mental health wise, there was all of the resources then that we have today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Cause there's so many good ways of reaching out to somebody from your phone. You don't even have yeah. to talk face to face if you don't want mm -hmm. to. And it's so important. Um, mm -hmm. especially with all the different stuff. So, um, for school, did you have anything specific that helped you in that area? I think for school, I was more willing to ask for help. Like I understood that, um, you know, Turner syndrome was affecting my learning and I was able to ask for help. I was able to go to tutoring. I was really close to my teachers you know, just making sure that they knew that I needed extra help all of the time, you know, and, and that really helped, you know, that, that really, really helped just reaching out, you know, and being aware that I don't learn like everybody else. And I think I, I was so lucky to realize that from the get go to understand that, yeah, I don't learn like everybody else, you know, that that's a struggle that I'm going to have, like, even now, you know, when I'm at work and I have to send an email I have to be very mindful of the email, you know, because of the dyslexia, because it's a whole process. So, you know, I think I learned that at a very young age that, you know, it's okay. I just learned differently. And that actually really, really helped with being so close to my teachers and asking for help. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. I've had a lot of girls reach out and I think kind of feel intimidated with mm -hmm. talking to teachers about it. Um. I know for me, it really was telling my teacher and they really caught on to how I learned. Like they were really able to tell the way that I learned mm. really well. Um, what would be advice you would give mm -hmm. a girl with Turner's for trying to talk to a teacher? I think my biggest advice is understanding Turner syndrome, understanding the challenges that's going to bring to you, um, and also understanding that Turner syndrome is different for each of us, that none of us is the same, that all of us are different, and that, you know, we deal with Turner syndrome in different ways, and it affects us in different ways, and just doing your research. I think doing your research so when people come with questions, you're prepared to answer them. You know, I, I think I was really lucky that my family did that research and, you know, when it was my time to learn about my condition, I was able to go to them and ask questions and then do my own research, you know, as I got older. But I really understand what Turner syndrome is and, and if you have questions, you know, ask, ask those questions because I'm sure there's somebody out there that has the answer, you know. So, but yeah, definitely my biggest advice would be understand Turner syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it can feel intimidating to try to explain it to somebody else, but when mm -hmm. you've kind of processed it, at least to that level in yourself, it helps. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is the biggest lesson that Turner syndrome has taught you? Ooh, um, I think the biggest lesson is that, um, you know, I am always going to be different and that's okay. And that life, life is difficult, but at the same time, once you put up the work, it, it's so worth it. You know, even if it's challenging, it's so worth it when you when you really put your time to understand who you are. And I think the biggest lesson that I got from Turner syndrome is that I learned about myself and who I am, you know, and it makes me appreciate life more than anything. I appreciate every day because I know my challenges. I know tomorrow might not be the same. You know, I know my health changes from time to time. And, you know, I'm so aware of that, that, 
you know, I appreciate every day. I think that's the biggest lesson that I appreciate every day. And every day I'm like, okay, I, I got to make it. We worth it, you know, and that's why, you know, I work as a counselor because I, I want to help other students because I know I'm here and there's a reason why I have Turner syndrome because I have learned so much from it, you know. So yeah. appreciate life. I think that's the biggest lesson. That's awesome. And so true. Um, it has been, I don't know if you've seen any of the posts or stories, but there's recently been, I, I describe it like they come in waves of mm -hmm. losses yeah. in the Turner syndrome community. And mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that it always impresses upon me too. Every time that mm -hmm. I hear those stories is don't take my health being okay this moment for granted yeah. and expect it to stay and don't, you know, don't forget time on earth is short and we don't yeah. know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow's not mm -hmm. guaranteed. And yeah. oh man. Yeah. It's, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's been something I've been processing a lot because there've been so many yeah. stories. Um, mm -hmm. So how would you say the research on Turner syndrome has either helped or needs more for you? Um, whether it's a different, a, an area that they could do more research in, research in or things like that. I think for me, um, I, I would like more research on, you know, after the growth hormones, once you're doing your hormone replacement therapy, what happens then, you know, um, because we're so different and our bodies are so different, even though we have the same medical condition that I really do feel like I feel lost at times. Like even right now that I'm going through my own, you know, hormone replacement therapy issues that I'm not finding the right one. I'm having so many issues with it that I'm like, okay, where do I go from here? You know, because I don't really know what's appropriate for me. I'm not sure my doctor fully understands what I should be using. So, you know, I think more research on that area because I think what I, I mean, in doing research myself, I find so many things related to the growth hormone and what happens to a young female with Turner's. But then as we get older, you know, I feel sometimes a little bit lost and a little bit alone because I'm not really sure um, what I'm looking for. You know, I'm not really sure what to research because I don't really think it's out there, you know, so I think that's the area where I would like to see more research. Yeah, I've heard that a lot and I've kind of noticed that myself. It seems like once you're on it, unless something comes up, they're kind of like, okay, yeah. you're good. And um, mm -hmm. that there actually isn't maybe enough guidance or research on as you get older, possibly mm -hmm. even, you know, once we're not on hormone therapy anymore, what yeah. should you be paying attention to? What exactly. Are the uh -huh. um, and that is definitely a huge area. I agree. We need mm -hmm. more information. Um, I think it's a part that probably is easy to get a little bit lost because there's all of the dramatics of earlier. Um, yeah. But more and more, I'm seeing things change so quickly with health that it's like, no, we really do need to know more about yeah. the potentials of as we get older. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, you are very yeah. right. Um, Okay. Well, is there anything you would like to share um, that we haven't already touched on? Um, I mean, I don't think so. I can't think of anything, but yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I can't think of anything <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Um, well, thank you so, so much for talking with me. It was so awesome getting to hear your story and chat. 
Um, and yeah, thank you so much for sharing your story. I was so excited to talk with you. And thank I hope, you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. It was great. Um, I love doing these so much. <laughs> yeah. So no, it's really exciting because, you know, when you have Turner syndrome, it's so difficult to meet other people with Turner syndrome that understand it. So what you're doing is so wonderful, you know, just so we, feel, so we don't feel alone because sometimes you do feel alone. You know, I think yes. sometimes you do feel a little bit isolated. So just, you know, listening to other people's journey, it's so powerful. So thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, the, the flooding of stories that have come into me. I just, I wanted to start sharing. Um, mm -hmm. because they've been so impactful for me. So thank you so much. And I hope you have thank a wonderful you. rest of the day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.